a selection of 40 photos taken by Phil Norton between 1972 and 2023 with retrospective comments by the 65-year-old photographer, American fighter jet in Toronto. I bicycled from Rossdale down to the waterfront of Lake Ontario at Ontario Place and found some locations where I could view the Toronto Air Show. I had never photographed fighter jets that travel near the speed of sound Mark 1 and with my 400mm lens I was very lucky to capture the vapor cone created around the aircraft fuselage until as it sped by the audience at several hundred miles. Per hour. Beaver tail slap. Warning to the photographer on the bank of the Sturgeon River in northern Ontario, Canada. Several beavers were out for a swim in the early morning mist, approaching close, then loudly slapping their tails and diving, only to circle back and repeat. Biker vapor in Mississippi. Tim from Columbia. Tennessee decided to take a six-hour Sunday drive on his Harley Davidson down the Natchez Trace Parkway to Tupelo, Mississippi to see the birthplace home of Elvis Presley. We chatted while his passenger Misty went to the bathroom, blizzard through the windshield. Since 1980 I have been making regular driving trips between Pittsburgh and Montreal and Toronto from home to home and many times I have encountered nearly zero visibility during snowstorms especially the legendary lake effect snow belt. Corridor through Buffalo, New York. This is an iPhone snapshot taken with one hand through the front windshield as I drove behind a transport truck leading the way. Calla lilies and AIA potted indoor plant made an ideal subject using solely my smartphone to take the picture and edit the image with built-in artificial intelligence for removing the cluttered background. Piper in Chateauguay, Quebec. The English minority population in the province of Quebec, Canada keep their long-standing Scottish and Irish traditions such as Canada Day and Robbie Burns Day and funerals of war veterans and events at the Canadian Legion, and the bagpipes are always present. Coal burning power plant in Pennsylvania. I spent the 80s decade documenting and lobbying on the aquatic and terrestrial and human effects of acid rain which was generated in the Ohio River Valley, USA where I grew up, and transported in the clouds to Quebec province where I lived. My magazine articles and slide presentations to corporate. Government and citizen audiences publicized the dieback of the sugar maple the very emblem of the nation. Cole Norton Track and Field. Toronto's vibrant sprinter culture produced the second fastest man in the world at the last Olympics. My son trained with the coach who discovered Andre de Grasse. Cole, shown here at the starting line, going through his preparation routine at a winter indoor meet. Cressy sailboats in Prince Edward County. My son-in-law gave me his DJI Phantom drone at his wedding in 2017. It took me nearly a year to get the courage to open up the box and try to fly. Drone photography is not just about putting the aircraft into position and bringing it safely back home but also knowing the the how to of composition and lighting to produce a good picture from the new vantage point. Earth Day this image is a composite of beautiful pictures of nature integrated with environmental disaster created for the church bulletin cover. I was giving an Earth Day presentation each year on Earth Day in Picton. Penswood's Ferns. I took this as a teenager in the 1970s on Kodak Tri-X black and white 35mm film and printed in the darkroom. This is a digital copy of the print which I used polycontrast paper. I like the wide range of tones from deep black to nearly white which was the zone system developed by Ansel Adams. Bird on head. 
Setting up pictures for newspaper publication is normally a no-no, but in this case that's what visitors to this woodland in Quebec do. Place seeds where the chickadees come and get them. My daughter Gabrielle was a willing subject and the image appeared in the Montreal Gazette. Horse competition. Raising children for 30 years of my life provided many photo opportunities and led me into other worlds depending on their individual interests. The young girls who compete in the hunter class of horses jumping over barricades are truly a courageous breed and passionate about their love of the animals. This is my daughter Gabrielle on her registered paint horse Candy. Great Blue Heron in Texas. My grandparents moved to the shores of the Gulf of Mexico in Texas and as a teenager in 1975 they guided me around Corpus Christi where offshore oil drilling and shorebirds seemed to coexist. That was the start of a great oil boom and mass migration of Americans to the southern Sun Belt. I see Chrysler. On the first day of the Great Ice Storm of 1998 that paralyzed the Montreal region and much of eastern Ontario, I snapped this picture on my street in Chateau Gway during the freezing rainfall that lasted three days. The image was published in many newspapers and magazines and even by an insurance company, Illinois Youths. In 1979 I bicycled and camped 4,000 miles around the Great Lakes. I became somewhat of a celebrity when I pulled into small towns on the prairies where the kids had nothing else to do but invite me in for a drink at Jim's Old Fashioned Soda Fountain. Lake Ontario Marsh Sunset over a curvy tributary to Lake Ontario in Prince Edward County during winter taken with a drone. Wetlands provide important habitat for birds, and further up in the watershed, they hold water like a sponge, helping regulate the flow rate to prevent flash flooding as well as the quantity and quality of water. Lightning and Lighthouse Prince Edward Point. I had driven 45 minutes outside of Picton to a point of land facing the eastern horizon of Lake Ontario, expecting a full moon to rise. But instead, a storm moved in from the west and I was able to capture a few bolts of lightning by continuously pressing the shutter at one second exposures. Luke crying. Parenting offers many opportunities to capture emotion and intimate moments with your children. I have several print albums filled with shots of my three kids and I believe they have counted to see who daddy loved to photograph the most. Maple Syrup, Pennsylvania. Before moving to Quebec, I was already fascinated by the secretive world of sugar makers that I had visited in the Laurel Highlands south of Pittsburgh. Very few others were photographing maple syrup making in the 1970s and I got to know some of the old families. I returned in the 2000s where the next generation continues the springtime labor of gathering and boiling this sweet sap. Mexican border. After covering the USA-Canada border for Canadian Geographic magazine in 1992, I took it upon myself to travel to America's southern border where I crossed into Mexico and witnessed the poverty that drives the illegal immigrants to run north. Mohawk Mask Living in the rural area southwest of Montreal, I was surrounded by three Mohawk reserves. Artist Steve Mickember in Canalake made this traditional Iroquois mask for the Five Nations Museum. Its location beside the Mercer Bridge was the scene of blockades by the Mohawk Warrior Society and the Quebec Provincial Police and the Canadian Armed Forces confrontations in 1990. Nashville Honky Tonk. Capturing the decisive moment. The kiss which I watched inconspicuously as it evolved in this country western bar along Broadway in Music City, USA from a table sipping sweet tea with my parents in 2010. Nicholson Island, a world unto itself afloat in the sea, 
This island has a hunting camp in Lake Ontario just off the shore of Prince Edward County. It was risky flying my drone so far out over the Great Lake but it returned. Ohio River Barge As part of my energy documentary project, I traveled to Kentucky coal country on the border of the state of Ohio where barges have historically plied the water highway between the mines and industry. They feed the fuel to power plants that in turn create electricity for consumers. Oka Crisis 1990 As the editor of a Chateaubuoy Valley newspaper, I covered the international news story when Mohawk warriors blocked the bridge that suburban commuters used to go to work in Montreal. A summer of frustration led to protests against the Mohawks and fighting broke out among different factions of the French-Canadian mob. This image has never been published. Bicycle Courier in Old Montreal For six years I worked in the Montreal Gazette photo department and walked daily through the old part of the city. I shot Kodachrome 64 film with my 35mm camera and telephoto lens. Inclement weather results in unique imagery and the Canadian winter yields amazing photos if you're willing to bear the pain of the cold. Ontario River Documenting the landscape that will be paved over by Highway 413. I shot eight drone images looking straight down over the upper reaches of the Humber River and stitched them together to make one in Photoshop Lightroom. Phil Norton Bike Trip Self-portrait taken with my drone showing items carried, and a few that weren't. On my 90-day bicycle camping trip from Canada to Mexico during the pandemic, as a dual citizen I was free to cross the closed USA-Canada border. Blizzard and Blue Camera Since 2012 I led amateur photographers and professional journalists from abroad on guided tours in all seasons, all weather, and at all times of day and night to give them opportunities to make great photos. My tour business, Photography Adventures, is based in Prince Edward County, Ontario, Canada. Rope Woman, at a Jewish Seniors Day Center in Quebec, a woman does exercise class, tugging and stretching with a rope. I was hired to design their annual report so I was able to spend many days getting to know and photograph the residents. Canadian Prairie Pastor Reverend Walter Donovan fetches the mail for his 90-plus year old parishioners, the Lefflers on a wintry windswept farm road near North Battleford, Saskatchewan in 1997, raised a Bayford, Ontario farm boy. He studied for the ministry in Toronto, married a nurse from New Zealand and together they served remote northern indigenous communities and rural Saskatchewan towns through the Presbyterian Church. He was my father-in-law. Old time maple syrup. The ladle or dipper used by generations of Suttons. Champion sugar makers in southern Quebec. What looks like an old shanty in the woods has won first place for its AA Extra Light Syrup at Canada's Royal Agricultural Winter Fair, Tennessee Town. As a photojournalist traveling by bicycle and camping, I am exposed to the world and sometimes I'm stuck out at night passing through unfamiliar towns. Luckily I was riding late to meet a ride into Nashville and a bed for the night. Apple iPhone 12 photo post processed to black and white in Adobe Lightroom. Texas train. The southwest USA desert blurs past the window of the AMTRAK passenger train headed to the west coast. I took a roomette with a view for the two-day trip from Houston to Mariposa, Arizona and another two days back in 2023. Robin Rosehip overwintering in Toronto rather than migrating south. A robin red breast finds nourishment on a rose bush in Rossdale, home to some of the wealthiest Canadians. 
This community sits above the Don River ravine that harbors wildlife and wild birds that frequently visit the local human inhabitants. Trump Rally. Pennsylvania oil and gas workers. Part of a crowd of 15,000. And a sunset sky frame the U.S. president campaigning for re-election during the pandemic of 2020. He lost the Keystone state which has been known to swing its vote either way, allowing Democrat Joe Biden to take his home state and the office of the president away from the incumbent. Utah at night. On my tripod at night, I had framed this scene of the Red Rock Tower and cliffs in Utah at Arches National Park. As I was setting up to take a time exposure, an automobile came along the winding road going up the mountain and accidentally light painted my scene. Ski racing in New England. Craftsbury. Vermont is a cross-country ski center and participants of all ages compete with others and themselves in sanctioned races like this one in 2002 and annual ski marathons of up to 50 kilometers through the green mountain fields and forests. West Virginia Mountains While mountain top removal coal mining has leveled the landscape of Mountain Mama, West Virginia, some wild scenery remains in the southern U.S. Appalachian Mountain Range. I met some retired deep mine workers who love their natural mountain top and hate the new way of mining that obliterates the landscape.